the pet trade. Um, whether you would ever have a situation where other animals never live with, with humans is probably very doubtful, but how that would actually pan out, I'm not quite sure. And it's kind of one of those things that um, vegans themselves are likely to disagree about. Uh, there are quite a few people who are uh, quite happy with the idea of um, living with what they would classify as either companion animals or animal companions. So that's an issue within uh, the movement that needs to be sorted out. Going back to the infestation, again, I think that was a question of uh, self-defense. In, in terms of the mosquito, yes, I would um, probably uh, swat a mosquito, although I would try to maybe remove uh, the mosquito. But this question was put once to someone who said, well, yes, I'd squat the mosquito, but I'd also squat a black single mother, um, you know, who also landed on my arm and started sucking my blood. And so it's another question of self-defense. If, if you've got a being that is attacking you and you can't reason with them, then you can defend yourself. Surely by the doctrine of self-defense, you've got to use reasonable force, which is normally equal to the force they're applying to you. So, Roger, shouldn't you be biting that mosquito rather than swatting? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, that, 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 that doctrine doesn't even exist, I don't think, in the sense that I don't it think... Legally anyway. <laughs> well, no, I, I, think in, I think in terms of, say, say you repel a burglar, yeah. I don't think you've got, you've got to use the same methodology. You've got to use reasonable force. Oh, yeah, so, reason, yeah that's yeah, right. And, and that, and that, yeah, that's yeah. why you end up in a court case, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Because then they want to find out whether you have then committed a, a crime yeah. in order to kind of prevent a crime. Yeah, so, I mean, in, that, in fact, you know, legally, that's one of the more complicated I issues, and, and there's, there's been co controversies over the years, you know, with people obviously killing people who have invaded their space or just inju injuring them. And then you get the situation where the burglar will sue the, the you know, yeah, that's right, yeah. But, um, but, but generally speaking, I think we would, we would deal with that in a, in a, in a sense of um, self-defense. Well, I also added to that question, would you be a guilt or a grip without having to swap? The... Yes, I would. I, I, w I would uh, regret that it happened, and I would much prefer that it didn't. Um, in the same way as that, you know, a any kind of thing where you're forced into a situation where you've done something harmful, then you would obviously fe feel regret. And then, because the motivation is the issue and the intent, I think you would then try and think about what to do in the future to try and prevent it. In, in the same way as we, we you know, I mean, it's, it's a kind of cliche, isn't it? And you, you know, we'll never let this happen again. So I, I think, you know, a kind of vegan mindset would be to say, well, you know, I've just done something which I didn't want to do. Um, I've done something that uh, you could argue is against my principles. Um, I felt it necessary because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, so now what am I going to try and do to, to prevent that? So I think you, you would have that regret, yeah. And I think you would be open about it. And you would try and be reflexive about it. And... Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, that really would be one of the key things about a vegan um, society would be that we would probably, we, we would be prepared to say, pay for research for these kind of issues. We, we would fund the kind of solution kind of issues. Like for example, the number of other animals that are killed on, on roads or, or ra railway lines, this kind of stuff. You know, some, some people, for example, have said, well, the issue there would be you would impose something like a 20 mile an hour um, speed limit, even on motorways, right? Other, others would move towards technology and think about uh, some technological devices which would warn the other animals of your approach, this, this kind of thing. So in, in other words, it wouldn't be just something you would, you would feel blasé about. It would be something you'd, you'd be regretful and then try and do something about it in a proactive sense. Is that okay? Okay. Um, unnecessary suffering. Yeah, well, unnecessary suffering is a cornerstone concept of um, animal welfare. And as the question had quite rightly suggested, it implies a degree of necessary suffering uh, built into the, to this kind of concept. Um, 
the question also said that you know, he wasn't that impressed by my case on sentience. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether, again, we would have to have a league of sentiency in that sense, uh, unless it was this, again, a one-to-one -one kind of conflict kind of situation. Um, in the general sense, we're, we're not usually in conflict with other animals. In fact, quite, quite often we create it ourselves by bringing them into the world and, and everything else. And so um, I would... I would probably agree that you could make the case that human sentiency is probably more complex than other animals. But the first thing to say in answer to that is the Darwin question, which is that we are different in degree and not in kind. Um, and also, these things are quite difficult to uh, measure. So sentiency is actually a difficult concept. Uh, at the same time, when animal rights people tend to talk about it, they talk about the ability to feel pain, pleasure, um, you know, and those kind of the basics of, of sentiency, all, over which there is little scientific argument now. There, there are a few Cartesians uh, left in the world who suggest that other animals are machine-like. You know? So, in actual fact, we don't tend to get the sentiency question, apart from in that sense of, well, if it was a one-to-one, -one, then wouldn't human sentiency count more? And that's, that actually has got some of the animal rights philosophers into some difficult debates because of the idea of, kind of these lifeboat scenarios or the kind of burning house kind of scenarios. You know, who would you save? Uh, this kind of issue. And most animal rights philosophers actually have said in that extremist situation, then they would, they would actually save, generally speaking, the, the human being. But not in every case that would be the difference. Uh, but usually, all things being equal, they would. As I said, that's proven to be somewhat controversial within the, within the movement. I don't know if that kind of clears that up because I, I, am, I am kind of openly recognizing that sentiency is a difficult concept. Um, and it, it is the basis of quite a lot of the theoretical um, stance of, of um, you know, rights-based animal rights, especially people like Francione and and um, Denea. And Denea would claim that insects, for example, are sentient beings, uh, whereas uh, Francione would say that there's a big area of doubt there, but he gives them the benefit of doubt in terms of, of how he reacts to them. So I'm not quite sure if I dealt with that, but that's the answer. Um, what was it? Uh, gut feelings. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to go with this, but certainly uh, if you look at uh, what what Reagan would say is, is that, that gut feelings and rational discourses and thought uh, feed into one another and, and you can't have one without the other, other or at least if you do it's an impoverished, impoverished thing. So in, in a sense that um, a wholly kind of rational approach uh, would probably be rather cold, I don't know if, if the question is trying to get at, get at that, and a wholly kind of emotional approach would probably be you know, very kind of unreflexive um, and, you know, not have the degree of rationality that's needed. So I think that we try just in our everyday lives to kind of create a balance there and it's a balance that will be called for within the terms of animal rights philosophy, certainly. So I don't know whether the question wants to respond on that issue. Um, um, we got one about, again, bias in terms of our family uh, I thought I thought I dealt with that really in the sense that um, you know dealt with that before in the sense of Steve, Stephen Wise kind, kind of issue, and um, but it's something of course that we, we we're trying to challenge in in the same way as it, we're dealing with the same arguments which would have been applied on racial grounds and on gender grounds before, okay, and so just as in the past say where well, we want to question that and critique that particular form, that particular barrier that is being produced, that particular reason for exploitation or whatever, neglect, abuse, um, we would question it on, on this level of other animals. And so, essentially, it goes back to that issue of animal rights as an extensionist idea. It's built, animal rights philosophy is built on the principles of human rights philosophy. 